Yomini. Hey! Sensei Ni. Hey! Okay, so we got a few hours. Um, we've got some non Ishinu people here. Um, we're not going to do kata because we do kata all the time. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on partner stuff. So we'll do some bonkai. We might do some self defense. We might do some ippon kamite, but it'll be all the old partner stuff. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll uh, try to incorporate some of the stuff we were doing the last couple of days, and so I'd show you how it also exists in, in the karate and where it is in the karate. And you know, you want to change your the way you think a little bit. Start expanding the mindset and expand the possibilities of what karate is. All right, um, it's not just kick and punch. It's not block and punch. There's a lot of stuff going on with it. Okay, um, you know, it's been a little bit hijacked for sport. Um, what we're going to do today is not sport. so. Okay. Let's start with something very simple. We have these all all throughout, all throughout the kata, which are kamai, right? And we always refer to them as kamai, right? So when I was training people, the, the sensei would say when I first started, well, the kamai points are the rest points when you're practicing the kata. So it gives you a chance to kind of catch your breath. It could be that, but no, it's a fighting technique. Okay? The problem is when we automatically say it's a kamai and we label it, now it just becomes a stance. So, but again, in, in, a, in a fight in modern times, do we ever want to come out and stand like this? No, because we're telling the guy we know something. So, so, and why are the hands open, all right? So, opening Kusan Ku, right? We have, we have this, right? Which looks exactly like what? Right, okay, right, right. So, Kusan Ku, we have one, we have two. We have one, we have two, all right? So, so as he comes in with a punch, this is the one, right? This is the two. So, if we want to do an armbar. So, as he comes in, this is the one, this is the two. If he comes in, this is the one, here. So, this is now just the one. This is just the one. We're not even doing the second. So, he comes in, this is the one, now this is the two. Okay? So, simple but right in, right, and people say, well, that doesn't look exactly like the technique in the kata. It's not supposed to, okay? So, if you remember yesterday when we do an application from the form, right, I did the one where you wrap around the arm for brush the knee and come up and seize the throat, right? So again, people say, well, that doesn't look like the move. Okay, but th this, is, this is the move, right? So now if this is wrapped, this, this is here, it's grabbing the throat, right? So again, what you do is there's a template in the kata, and then we take that template and we expand on that template. And we say, how many different ideas can we come up with to make something an effective fighting move? Now, the other thing to remember is, okay, you've got to come up with some on your own that maybe aren't so hot. Okay? But that's okay. Because like Steve, I show one, and Steve's like, oh, this one feels good. This one works really good for Steve, right? But then Angie says, yeah, that one's no good for me. I can't do that one. But then the other one, Angie's like, oh, this one's really good for me. And then the other one, Steve, says, oh, that's crap. I can't make that work at all. Right? So this is why anybody that says, oh, there's only one application for each move is, is so ridiculous, I don't even want to go there. Okay? So, so let's try this. So we'll try these ones initially. So the first one is here, right? And then we come right here with the arm. Okay? Second one is here. And we come in, this will be a strike. And again, strike to target of opportunity. Then from here, and it depends, right? If I come here, this would all could also be a strike across the throat. If you're much shorter, you can come with the knee. Okay? And you can throw over the leg. Alright? Alright, so find a partner, work on that. I see a lot of ways I can and you don't have your out. So you should put the man on. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I
Sun Tzu, although a lot of people don't do it anymore. The end of Sun Tzu, I was taught this way, and I was taught this way. And there's video of the founder doing Sun Tzu like this. Okay? So, so you say, well, wh why is he doing it like that? Well, he's doing it like that because of what we're doing, but it, it's a little bit different. So as he comes in, we come here, but now as we do this, this is a grab. Now I come and turn over. Now or I do this. Yes. Yeah, like yesterday. So, so as he comes in, I come here, now I step in and I have him. So, so same thing. You could do that, you could do this one like this. So let this hand intercept and catch, right? Which looks like opening over the chin form, right? Mm -hmm. Now from here, Sun Tzu. Right? So we come here and here, right? So as he comes in, we catch, and now we turn it over. And again, depending on how it's done, you drive him into the ground. If you want to rotate, you slam him over this way. You break his arm, whatever you want to do. Okay? Control, break, depends on what you're doing. Okay? All right, so try this one slow. So catch this one now this way. Good, good. That was good. Okay, okay, so let's... Let's talk some common sense. I know that's uh, not always a big topic in martial arts, but let's talk some common sense. So we have this move in Sun Tzu, right? Where we kick, okay? So look at the position of the hands. So George comes in to punch me. I decide to come up and catch his hand. So I, I'm doing the same technique we just did, right? So our natural instinct is when we grab somebody or we grab somebody, their natural instinct is to pull away. So that's the natural instinct. So what we'll do is we'll work that. So as I come up and grab, George pulls back, I'm going to kick. Okay? So my ne the next move in the kata, um, in the kata, we do it on the right side. So I'm actually doing it on the left of the application. We're here. We come down here, here. Here. Okay? So George comes in, right? I catch, right? Okay? So now I have to kick here, right? But, so, let's do it again so you can pull back, yeah, right? So I come in, he goes to pull back, I kick. Now, I can do several things. This can come here and come here, right? If this is down here, it can come up here into the throat, okay? If I come here, this can come here. As this goes here, this can come up here. So you're doing this where they're passing each other, okay? And again, when we hit him here, he goes down, and as this goes down, this hand comes up. Yeah, it's not very good for him. Okay. The first one was again. Yeah, the first one was again. <laughs> yeah. What I'm doing is I'm dropping my forearm on the very base of the skull here. Okay, so you do this, you gotta go slow and be careful. So, you know, and you can try this both sides. So as he, as he comes in on this side, I come here. He goes to pull back, right? So don't pull so much with the arm, because I have here. Right. So try to pull me back, right? right? Okay, right? So, because if I'm here and catch you, it's gonna be so easy, right? So then again, same thing, I can come here. I like this one better, because the way he wound up. Now I come here, and I come here. And now I take him down this way. So now this becomes like this. So, depending on where your partner winds up, see what's available, see how you can manipulate and use those things. Sometimes they may not be there, so you do something else. Okay? All right, try this one slowly. So, pull a move from Kusanku, but not really, it's also in Sun Tzu, right? That's in several of the other kata, right? Okay. And then I added, I said, okay, let's now go from Kamai, where we're doing this move in Sun Tzu, but now we're doing it as we're catching his arm and attacking the joint right away. And if you notice, I'm not worried about being in this kind of stance because I'm not going to be standing like that in a fight. 
So what I do is I just kind of move myself where I'm in a good position and I, where I can kick afterwards, right? And we talked about that. If he does the natural response and tries to pull back once he feels pain on the joint, that creates you know, distance, so that gives you distance to follow up with the kick. Okay? So, <clears throat> but we can do this, right, where he comes in with the punch, right? All right? So he comes in with the punch and I catch, right? And now maybe as I go to kick, right, he pulls back and he drops his elbow and pulls down, right? But now I'm here. So now from here, I can come up. And as I come up, I can hear. I can also come up and I can do this. I can do a rising punch here and break his arm. But now I can come up here and now I can hit here. Now I can hit here. Now I can come in and take him down. So now we've gone from the starting in Sun Tzu, now we've morphed into Seiji. Okay? So again, as he comes in, right? Why, would I, why might I do this? Well, I might do this because he comes in with the punch, right? And again, like, he might pull back, right? Pull out of my hand. But now my hand's here, so follow up. So now my hand's in front. It's not underneath. So I couldn't do this one. So now I just do here, here, right? Now come in, right? But also, when I do this, he's probably going to go up. Now this can, back fist can drop on his throat. Elbow in, down to the groin. Strike. But if you want to throw, you throw. Yes, Lord. So he can punch you with the right or the left? Or is he start with the left and just the right? You, you should always work techniques against both sides. Okay. And sometimes you, so if in the kata it's done like this, you should literally, okay, let's, he punches here, and I come here, and now I do the tick kick, right? And I say, okay, do this one, right? And now I come, I come here. And it's the same move. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so again, the move in the kata is here and here, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes in with this one, I come in and strike, now I do this. Only I would really drive them down. Yeah. So people say, oh, that's not the kata. Okay, whatever. whatever. Whatever you want to think is not the kata. I kick, the next move is this. Okay? So what I just do? I kicked them, and I went like this. Mm -hmm. Right? The only thing is, I'm not in my mind thinking it's a what? It's a block. Right? It's problem in modern karate, everything's labeled. Everything's got a label. Okay? <coughs> well, this is a shuto block. The problem is, it's not always a shoot the block. It's also a strike, right? It's also a what? A seizing right. technique, right? Could also be what? A fingertip strike. I could hit you with the edge of my thumb, right? So when we start labeling things, it becomes a problem, right? Because even myself, right? You heard that this is a low block so many times, it's hard to get that out of your, your head because you hear this all the time, right? But we have to get it out of our head. Because the only place like low blocks like this work or head blocks like this work is really in a, in a, a, a sport sparring setting. And that's why they become only blocks when there's a lot more to them than that. All right? Okay, so, so let's try this one. And again, you can adapt it. Figure it out. See what's going on there. Right? Okay? So try it. One more time. Okay. One more time. So, so if he, he comes in, I come here, right? I kick him, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I jump underneath and the arm's here, I can punch straight up and break the elbow, right? If, if I wind up over the arm, I can just strike here. Elbow. And down. Then this is, becomes a hammer fist to the groin, lead, right? And then from here, right? So, so then from here, obviously, I can finish up and take him over and throw him. And you say, well, what, what's that move, right? Well, that move is this move. In Sun Tzu. I mean, again, right? You know, it's right there, right? But we see the move and we're like, what's that? Oh, it's a back fist. Okay. Label again. It's a back fist. Okay. How much power is in the back fist? So, oh, well, you use the back fist to distract. Okay, well, what am I distracting when the back fist is down here? What am I, what am I distracting? There's nothing to distract. Oh, well, you hit him in the groin. Yeah, okay. But again, like I mentioned to someone over here, right? If you're a guy, the first thing you learn to protect in your life is what? Mm -hmm. The family jewels, right? Why? Because you're playing as a little kid and you get hit there. And boy, oh boy, is that not good, right? And then your brain says, crap, that man, that was the worst pain I've ever felt. So now your brain remembers that. Your brain says, okay, right? Oh, okay, right? Okay. Anytime anything goes to hit that, that's you're protecting it right away. It becomes in, super instinctual. 
Okay? So, so we've been doing some stuff from Sun Tzu Karate. So the uh, serious Ishinru Karate people who've been training longer, obviously they know the Kata. There's some beginners in the room, they don't know this Kata. So Sun Tzu Kata is the founder's Kata, Tatsu Shinobu's Kata. He created it. Okay? The name of the Kata Sun Tzu means strong man. Okay? He makes the Kata. So what he does is he makes the Kata and he makes it, um, he pulls moves from all the other Kata and he creates his Kata. So we have moves from Seisan, and people say, well, no, no, there's no moves. The moves aren't there from Seisan. 100% there's moves from Seisan. This is Seisan, right? Right here. Right? Even though it looks different, it's Seisan. First three punches, right? And <clears throat> then we have moves from Wansu. We have moves from Kusanku. We have moves from, you know, I mean, you name it. You know, they're in there, right? Okay. So, so would he have picked moves that he didn't like? No, he picks moves he likes, right? And the interesting thing is like the Wan Su move, in Wan Su we do it on the right side, in Sun Su we do it on the left side, right? So, but I think he was teaching us more than just picking, telling us what moves he liked. I think he was saying, giving us a, um, something deeper, which is, okay, so there's all these kata, right? And everybody shows Bunkai, for all these moves in the kata, right? Well, why can't we combine moves from different kata? I mean, because that's what he did. He took all these moves from all these other kata and he created a new kata. But if you look a little deeper, you say, okay, well, let's, let's, if we start here, okay, well, the next move in the kata, it's not there for me. Okay, well, what move would be there? And then you figure it out and you realize, oh, that's, for, that's like the hanchi. Oh, that's like Wan Su, right? So when you start looking at fighting, and you're trying to understand what you're doing in the kata, right? So this is the key, right? You know, we practice kata because kata, uh, for a few reasons. One, you're trying to work perfect body mechanics. And you never pull fighting moves into the kata. If you start to try to make the kata look like a fight, the kata starts looking ridiculous. Your body mechanics go out the window, right? And people do this all the time. You know, I'll ask someone in Ishiru um, who does this in Sun Tzu. And I'll say, what, what are you doing? Oh, well, that's the application. The guy's punching and I'm blocking and I'm hitting him. And I'm like, okay. Do you realize how ridiculous you look? Okay. And I can tell you, Master Shimabuku asked me on occasion, he goes, what is this, Michael? I've seen people in this country do this. I said, Sensei, I've been asking them for years, and they just insist on doing it, and they don't realize how utterly wrong and ridiculous they look. Okay? So, so once you start adding fighting moves into the kata, the kata starts going off the rails. So kata is about posture, generating power. So if I'm paired off with someone and working, I can't go full power. We can't hit each other, right? We can't break the person's arm. But when I do kata, I can go full power. It's the only time you can go full power. You're hitting the heavy bag, you're like, oh, I'm going full power. No, you're not, because the heavy bag's stopping your punch. You hit the makiwara, I'm going to go full power. It's stopping your punch. You're still not going full power, right? So the only time you're going full power, and you should be, is when you're doing a solo form, right? So you work full power when you do kata. You make sure your alignment's correct, right? If that's what you're working on, your body learns to move right. Then you bring that ability of how to move, you bring that into the fight. And you translate that movement into the fight. Knowing that in the fight, there are no stances, okay? Knowing that in, in, the, in the fight, it's gonna look very different, right? But when we're trying to figure out those techniques, right, that's what we wanna do. So you get to a point, you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, can we work some, some bunkai from this kata? Yeah, okay. And you do something, you realize, oh, boy, that move from this kata would work perfectly. Oh, no, no, wait, we can't do that, because that's not the kata we're working on. No, 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 you have to make that other move work exactly. Right? And that's when, again, it becomes problems. And what it is, is your brain isn't trained them to just fluidly fluidly go from technique to technique. So the ultimate goal is, right, so when you start, and again, like I said to Jimmy this morning, I have 45 years now of non-stop training to look back on, okay? 
I'm in Arizona. My wheels are turning all the time. I'm not teaching seven days a week, so I got more time to think about things. Right? Most people never get past the technique stage. They're always working techniques. Well, let's, let's learn a new technique. Let's do this technique. Let's practice this technique. Ultimately, you have to become the technique. That's the stage most people don't get to. So there's nothing wrong with only knowing techniques and being good at techniques. But if you get to the, te the stage where your body is the technique, meaning whatever the opponent does, my body just does something. I don't have to think, oh, wait a second, she's coming at me with her right hand, so let me, tr let me do this technique. No, you just instinctually know how to move. So everything you do becomes completely natural. Right? So like, when you look at video of the founder, he doesn't look nearly as crisp and sharp as a lot of other people of his generation and other uh, karate styles. Right? Yeah, because he's moving naturally. And, and that's how we're all supposed to move. So when you see all these karate guys in these stiff positions, no, that's a modern thing. Right? That's very modern thought. Right? You know, we just spent two days doing a, a Chinese art, right? Where we didn't talk about stances. And I showed a technique and you did it, right? And you didn't think about your feet. You didn't think about where they were, right? And you just moved, right? And, and that's the key, right? So the problem is, is if when you're moving, you're thinking, oh, I have to be in Seisan. Or I have to be in Zenkutsu Dodge. Or I have to be in Seiyutsu Stance. Or I have to be in whatever, right? Right off the bat, you've got a huge problem. Because again, in a fight, there's no stances. You just have to move. So, so keep that in mind with kata. So when you're practicing, whether it's ipon kamite or anything, right, you go in and you do a move, and for whatever reason, maybe your partner moves differently or whatever, and now that technique didn't work or the target wasn't there. Okay, so stop a second. Don't go, oh, all right, let's do that again. Stop a second and say, okay, so if this happened, what targets are available to me? What techniques are available to me? And then do that. And if you start doing that before you know it, you start doing that without thinking. So that's what you want to have happen with your brain. So you, want, you don't want to go where he comes in and punches, right? So he punches, and I go here, right? And I went to, you know, I went to do a punch here, and for whatever reason, he pulls his arm down, right? Now I go do that. Oh, he's not there. Okay. All right. Well, let's do it. No, you want to do is he does that now. See how my hand immediately ceased, right? Now, I'm already know what I'm doing, right? Which is several things, but I'm normally with me, I know what I would do, right? Which would be probably this coming across here or this coming across there, right? So the thing is, is you want to train yourself where those instinctual reactions begin to happen naturally. So initially, it will not be natural. Mm -hmm. You have to stop when those things happen and figure out what you want to do. But eventually, when it becomes instinctual, that's when you'll begin to realize certain things. That's when other things start to open up. All right? All right, take a break.